G'day everybody, Daniel here and Matt from GI Energy. Today we're talking about Amber Electric. We just want to explain exactly what that is and how it works. So in recent times, there's been a huge rise in the inquiry and install of solar storage, largely due to the government incentives that are now in place to do so. And with that, people are looking into VPPs, which is a virtual power plant, more and more. Amber Electric is most likely the most popular one and the one that you may have heard of and certainly the one that our customers are going to more than anybody else. So we wanted to explain exactly how that works. In a nutshell, Amber Electric allows you to access the wholesale market, meaning you can buy energy at the wholesale rate, whatever that might be. And then it allows you to sell energy back from your battery also at whatever the wholesale rate is at that moment in time. Matt, can you explain a little bit more about how that works specifically? Yeah. So. Amber Electric are an Australian company with the goal of obviously moving to 100% renewables. So as you explained there, through, through the new subsidy and just the huge uptick in battery installations, a lot of homeowners are looking to maximise their investment and um, obviously achieve a better payback um, from their system, along with larger batteries as well. So the way that Amber's smart shift plan works, which is the most common plan um, that people will access is it works on five minute interval data. So similar to what some businesses may have for how they buy power and obviously uh, record their demand for power. So throughout the day, the rate for power can be really, really low, potentially even negative. And obviously moving into the future, it likely will be negative in a lot of areas because of so much solar on the network. Um, so the way that I used to explain it was, it was a great supplement for your battery that if you had a really rainy or overcast day, you could actually fill up your battery during the peak hours of the day at a very low rate so that your battery is full for the evening and then it gets you through the night rather than having a battery that's only 25% full that you discharge quite quickly and then you then pay peak rate for power from seven or eight o'clock, whatever time that battery may be empty. So that was the initial benefit that we've looked at for many years with Amber. What we're really looking at now though is actually trading, selling power to the grid in the evening um, or potentially other times of day where there is a price spike. So at certain times, this can be really lucrative. Um, so there are many days of the year that we're seeing now, even in winter, where prices can be $10 a kilowatt hour, $12 mm -hmm. a kilowatt hour, and some of the highest that we've seen around $20 a kilowatt hour in the summer. So it's not happening every day. And I don't want to give you that idea that it happens every single day of the year. However, if that only occurs for a few days yeah. and you're able to trade power to the grid at that rate and consume very little at the same time, obviously that's a very rewarding way of having a battery, almost like you've got some money just sitting in a bank account. You're, you then move it into a high interest account or an index fund or something like that to build a return. So it's essentially just providing you the best option for having a battery um, and getting the most out of it. Mm -hmm. So it's not something you must do at all. If you, it can be a little bit confusing and that a, a lot of questions we get asked are, what do I have to do? Yeah. Like, is this autonomous? Do I need to be looking at the stock market every, every second to do this? So the smart shift plan all happens in the background. So there's an algorithm that learns how you consume power and it builds an energy profile for you, just your home. So over a six, seven week period from sign up to Amber, it'll start learning day by day. So if it notices that, okay, everybody leaves by 8 a.m. at 5 p.m., there's a huge surge in power. So air con, cooking, whatever else that may be happening, it's then gonna start to make decisions based on, you've got this size battery, you require this much power, I've got this much spare that could be traded, or there's obviously no power spare. Um, and then if there's the benefit of obviously trading power at a higher rate, it can automatically do this. If you wanna, obviously maintain control. You just go on the app and there's a few toggles there for how you want to do it. So you don't have to set it up for automatic transfers, but obviously it would be very beneficial to do so. And the key there is the amount of storage. So a lot of people ask, how much storage do I need? That question may be related to their, their power usage, their future power usage. And obviously with this subsidy, you only get one go at achieving that subsidy. So it's really important to get the amount of storage that you need now plus any future increase in your usage, or mm -hmm. if you're thinking of Amber, 
a bit of a buffer there because if you don't have a large enough battery, there's going to be nothing to trade. Yeah. So we really want to look at the right blend between power consumption on site and obviously the size of the battery that you've got in there. Yeah. To sort of simplify and compare it to a traditional retailer, what you're doing at the moment if you're with one of the big retailers um, at home or with your business is basically they're buying energy from the wholesale yep. and they're marking it up and they're selling it to you. You might have an off peak and a peak rate or just a flat rate and it might be 30 cents, it might be 35 cents, it might be 40 cents per kilowatt hour of energy purchased. What Amber is doing is basically acting as a middleman between you and that wholesale market. <clears throat> so rather than you purchasing energy from a retailer at a marked up price, yep. you're buying whatever the wholesale rate is. So it's really important that if you don't have a battery and you don't basically have your own little mini power station at home, you can be exposed to that wholesale rate. Yeah. If it's $20 a kilowatt hour and you don't have a battery to supply your home or business, you're paying $20 a kilowatt hour instead of 30, 35 or 40 cents. But if you do have a battery and it's big enough to power your home or business during those spikes, you can run your own home or business for nothing because it's from your battery. Mm -hmm. And you can also sell it back at $20 a kilowatt hour. So the way to think about that is in the mornings when everyone's getting ready for work and school, power is quite expensive. You want your battery to have energy there. Then it can be depleted. During the day, it can charge up from solar panels or from the grid. If it's coming from the grid, it's going to be really low. Yeah. That's when the wholesale rates are really cheap. Or as Matt said, sometimes negative. So you charge your battery up for next to nothing. Everyone comes home from work and school. That's when you get those peaks. That's when you need your battery to be full. Yeah. Run your home, run your business, sell it back, deplete it all. By the time you do that, when the rates start going back down again after 9 p.m. and certainly after midnight, they're obviously through the night very low. That's when you can charge your battery up again and then you do it all again. Yeah. That's really how I see it. And um, I'm about to put another battery in and, and shift over to Amber to myself. And um, I don't have the time to be sitting around training energy on my phone. As you said, you don't have to. Yeah. And that's probably the biggest thing is this will look after it for you. We think it's great. And um, as a, in terms of a VPP, as far as we understand, and we can see the best one out there. By, yeah, by miles at the moment, absolutely. Um, there's not a single site that I've looked at with 16 kilowatt hours or more battery storage that this isn't beneficial for. Yeah. And you don't necessarily even need those big spikes. Mm. I've got a friend with a small battery, a modest battery in comparison of 9.6 kilowatt hours. His average feed-in rate is about 40 cents a kilowatt hour. He yeah. may only trade one or two in the evening at that 5, 6 p.m. where it might be 50 cents a kilowatt hour. Yeah. 30 cents the next day, a dollar the next day, and, and, and vice versa. So <clears throat> for him, he's getting 40 cents a kilowatt hour. He's probably getting three cents for yeah. his solar export in the day. So that isn't even appropriate to the conversation anymore about what your feed-in tariff is for exporting solar energy. Firstly, yeah. you've got a battery to store it. Secondly, it's worthless. Yeah. So to have a battery large enough with some spare capacity there and the, that magic number of <clears throat> what we're being asked, what's the right size battery to have? There isn't a one size fits all because every house uses power differently. Different number of people in the home, different size of the home. Um, aircon, no aircon, gas, electric, whatever else. There's so many variables. That's why you need to speak to somebody that knows what they're doing here, that's been doing this for years and years, that's designing this system. So you do it once, yeah. you do it right, you get the subsidy initially, and then you look at Amber and we can look at it together to say, okay, you do have an extra five kilowatt hours spare each night because your battery is only getting to 30% state of charge. If you can sell that power for 30 cents a kilowatt hour, you've then offset your supply charge. But also, I think what a lot of other installers miss that talk about Amber is supplementing the charging. Yeah. So through the day, it's a really rainy day, it's a really overcast day, which there's obviously a lot of those days here as, as there's also beautiful sunny days. Yeah. But to be able to top up the battery for a really low rate, so you're prepared the next day, the next night, is perfect. Yeah. So it's that's the benefit that I really see that, that is, is really important and that we try and talk about. And the next thing, as you mentioned before, will be that early morning spike. Yeah. There's no solar at that time, particularly in winter. Solar generation isn't getting started on the East Coast until 7, 7.30 a.m. Um, so people are getting up at 5, 6 a.m., having a shower. And I'll use the hairdryer for a long time in the morning, <laughs> cooking food, you know what I mean? So there's going to be that next spike there. Definitely. That's the next one to take advantage of. Top up your battery a little bit more overnight. Yeah. So you've got a little bit more to use, and then you just ride it out. Peaks and troughs through the day. 
it's a very holistic approach yeah. in comparison to just having solar panels on your roof, isn't it? Which obviously saves you money and it's great, but if you've got now solar battery and a VPP like Amber, you're just, um, it's such a more well-rounded energy management solution for your house. That's why it's so popular. I think so. I mean, yeah, a few colleagues of ours here are, are putting in some pretty large batteries with Amber. Um, their goal is obviously, as I mentioned, to be 100% renewable. And I guess the final point and the, the last question we often get asked is, there's obviously going to be a huge surge of battery installations now. Is this go going to affect these peak periods where you can trade power? And from speaking to Amber, they believe that they need 1 million batteries installed on the network yeah. to actually even just soften this demand. Yeah. So their goal is a million batteries by 2035, but that isn't 1 million batteries for self-sufficiency that people are consuming themselves. That's 1 million batteries purely to discharge to the grid. Yeah. Because at the same time, yes, there's going to be hundreds of thousands of batteries installed, but there's also hundreds of thousands of new homes. Yeah. Growing population, yeah. businesses to obviously supply services and everything else. And the main one really is EVs. Yes. And I think the knowledge around actually how to charge an EV in the in the right or the smartest, most cost effective way um, isn't to do it when you pull in at 5 p.m. No. Because the price of power can be fifteen, twenty thousand dollar a megawatt hour. <laughs> you mm. know what I mean? It's insane. So if yeah. we have colleagues here, myself with an EV, if you've got questions about how to charge the car the most cost effective way, either from solar. Um, or even using a retailer to supplement it, give us a call. We, we build and design these systems every day. And um, it's really worth doing that with people that really understand how to do it, that have first-hand experience. 100%. Yeah, please do get in touch. We can do a completely obligation-free proposal for solar battery. We can include the um, expected return on investment with something like Amber in there if you're interested. And um, as Matt said, the knowledge is there regarding electric vehicle charging as well. So. Hopefully we can help. Um, if not, hopefully you've got some value from this content and uh, we may hear from you sometime in the future. Thank you. Thanks.